So, and when we add this all up, we get 0 0.031425, and take the square root, we get a standard deviation of 0.1773. So now notice, we kind of sacrificed a little bit on return, going from, let's say, 10% to 7.83%, but our volatility has gone down from 25 or 0 0.20 to 0.1773. This is the power of, of um, diversification and uh, helps us in our, just as kind of a, a good um, investing device. Remember with covariances, it's going to be positive if there's generally an upward trend, negative if there's generally a downward trend, and roughly zero if there is uh, no pattern. So uh, this is how we could do the spread. And let's go ahead and do this again for uh, the social choice fund. If we had done the social choice fund just uh, by itself and assume they're independent, it's not going to be um, that challenging. All I have to do is plug in sigma 1 squared for the social choice, sigma 2 squared for the stock fund, and so forth. But now, let's kind of go show you a way that we could go ahead and do it when we have a covariance term. All right. So um, the covariance part is this part right here, where if we take the variance of linear combination, we get a1 sigma squared, a1 squared times sigma 1 squared. But then we've got these covariance types. And let me just show you a way that you can set it up and so you can evaluate this without as much trouble. So let's suppose that we have uh, we want to find the variance of a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus a3 x3. Okay, so we want to find out what that is. And I'll show you a nice little way that you could do this. Um, what you can do is kind of make just like a little chart. A1 x1 up here, another column, a2 x2 and a3 x3. A1, X1, A2, X2, A3, X3. And what you're going to just do is we're going to multiply these and get what the covariances will be. So here you get A1 squared, um, sigma 1 squared. Here you're going to get A1, A2, sigma 1, 2. And by symmetry, down here, you're going to get a1 times a2, sigma1, sigma2. So you just take like the whatever's in the row and whether it's a column and multiply them together. Whenever you get like uh, uh, x2 times an x2, you're just going to get x2 squared. So this will be a2 squared, sigma2 squared. Up here will be a1, a3, sigma1, 3 a2, a3, a2 times a3, and this would be sigma 2, 3, and by symmetry, a2, a3, sigma 2, 3, and a1, a3, sigma 1, 3, and finally, sigma 3 squared, sigma, um, sorry, sigma, th sigma 3 squared, a3 squared is kind of the way that I want to write that. So that's just kind of a nice matrix matrix way uh, that you could write this. So now let's try it towards the social choice fund. Okay, so the social choice fund gives us the uh, standard deviations and the correlations between the two, and also the um, also the um, the various um, distribution of our assets. So what I'm going to have then is I put 40% into the first one, 35% in the second one, 15% in the third one, and 10% in the fourth one. So 0.4x1, 0.35x2, so 
So I've got 40, 35, 15, 10, 45, 35, 15, sorry, 40, 35, 15, 10 for the x4. And um, we also have these values for what the covariances are down here. Actually, the, um, the correlations of 0.15. And these are just sort of pure speculations as far as what they might be. So let's figure out the covariances with these correlations. Remember the co covariances is given by um, the covariance of x1, x2 is equal to the correlation times sigma1, sigma2. So this would be, the covariance for this one would be 0.5 times the two standard deviations, 14.03 and 23.04. This will be 0.4 for the covariance of 14.03 times 24.1. It's the problem when you use real data. They're not as nice to do. But uh, x1 and x3, hey, that's nice because I get zero. Uh, the cov would be 0 0.9 times 2 and 3, 23.04 times 24.1. And x2 and x4 will be negative 0.2 times 23.04. So again, this is review. I got 0.5 here. And then I've got to multiply by the two standard deviations. 0.4 here times 14.03 times 24.10. Those are the two standard deviations. And then I got 0 because, hey, that's 0, so anything times 0. And then 0 0.9, and then I was up to negative 0 0.2, 23.04 times um, 4. That would be uh, 15. And then finally, x3 and x4 will be negative 0 0.3 times 24.1 times 15. And so those will give us the covariances. Okay, so I multiplied all of these terms together to get the covariances for each one. Now let's go ahead and fill in my matrix chart, so to speak. Um, what I'd end up getting is uh, 0.4 squared times 14.03 squared because the variance is just the covariance. If you have the same variable, it's the covariance from that. And this would be 0.4 times 0.35 times its covariance is 161.6. And then 0.4 times 0.15 times its covariance, 135.2. And then 0.4 times 0.1. And then x1, x4 turns out to be that it has a 0. Okay, so I'm not going to fill out, well, and then I'd have, this would actually be the same value. It just is symmetrical across. This would be 0.35 squared times 23.04 squared. This would be 0.15 squared times 24.1 squared. See down here I'm getting the, the standard deviations, which gives me the variances. And this would be 0.1 squared times um, 15 squared. All right, now if we did, if all these were independent, all we have to do is add up the diagonal and we would get the values. So um, 0 0.35, 0 0.15, and then 23 is 499.7, and so forth and so forth. And then what I just do is add up all of these together 
and that could then give me my variance for that particular value. Okay, what I did was I filled in the rest of this chart, used um, Excel, and what I ended up getting was that sigma squared is 111.625 and if you take the square root of that, we get um, it's 10.565. Okay. And so the 10.565. So you have to add up all these rows and columns. You don't have a problem as, as complicated as that. But this is just to kind of let you know how you might do it if you had a, some sort of portfolio to figure out what your variance is. Now, suppose... I want to know um, with with um, this value I have sigma equal to 10.55 and I also have the expected value of 1.31 okay I have the expected value of 1.31 from what I calculated or what is calculated there on I'm sorry, 0.321. And so uh, with my portfolio, which is actually not pretty representative of um, what we normally have. So let's, let's not use that one. Let's go back and use the one where I had uh, stocks, bonds, and real estate, which is maybe more realistic. Uh, there, my expected value was going to be 7.8% re return, and the standard deviation was going to be 1.773. So we've calculated a 78.8% return in 0.1773. And with this now in my portfolio, I can then kind of ask the question as, well, what's the probability I am going to lose money? That is, what's the probability that my portfolio is going to be less than zero? So if you kind of think about it, here's my mean of 0.78. Here's zero. I want to find the probability that I will get something less than that. So if I could convert it to a z-score, z will be equal to zero, negative 0.78, divided by 0.1773. So negative 0 0.078 divided by 0 0.1773, I'd end up getting a z-score of negative 0.4399. Let's just round that up to negative 0.44. And uh, to find my probability then, um, I will go from a very small number up to negative 0.44. And what that tells me then is that my resulting chance of the probability um, is the probability that z is less than negative 0.44 or in other words my probability is about a third. I have a 33 percent chance of losing money with this portfolio. However if I kind of checked it with what I had for just stocks alone I'd have a greater chance of losing money as well. So here are some ideas that you can use um, for uh, calculating like what your for portfolio return might be and um, this kind of relationship that you might get with these cor correlations. We're going to use this as a time series one and, uh, and uh, it'll be um, um, not as advanced as what we did here. But that gives you an idea uh, that you can use, perhaps, in, um, in real life or in your corporate finance class.